Okay, so to prepare life support, all we have to do is just rehydrate this lyophilized powder, and then we're gonna centrifuge it. So all we need to do, obviously, if you're doing this uh, in a sterile manner, you can do this in a cell hood with uh, autoclave reagents. Um, but for this purpose, I'm just doing it out in the general lab space. So I'm gonna rehydrate the full contents of the tube. So I'm gonna put in roughly 40 mils of my suspension media. And in this case, because I wanna print collagen, my suspension media is going to be uh, a pH buffered heat piece solution. So this is at pH 7.4, which is what you want. If you're doing something like sodium alginate, you'll do uh, 0.1 weight percent calcium chloride. Um, but what's important is that once you hydrate this, so we need to actually just disperse this, so we're gonna take a vortex mixer. And I recommend vortexing it for around a minute, just to guarantee that everything is dispersed. So we wanna make sure that everything's at least off the bottom of the tube. So we're gonna keep doing this for maybe 45 more seconds. Okay, so once that's nice and rehydrated, we're gonna actually let this sit for around 10 minutes just to ensure that everything is fully rehydrated. Otherwise, it can continue to swell very slightly if you kind of rush this process. So we're just gonna let this sit and come back in a couple of minutes. So now that it's hydrated, all I have to do is place this in my centrifuge. So I'm gonna balance this. So I put in 35 mils of fluid, so I'm putting in 35 mils as a counterbalance. And for this, we're doing 2000G for five minutes. And so we'll just come back when it's ready. So at the end of the cycle, all we have to do, take out our balance. And then what we have at the very bottom is we have our supernatant, and then we have around 20 mils of life support that's compacted. So now that's compacted, we just have to get off the excess water. So we just dump it out. And you can see that even when I'm tilting this, the life support stays where it is because it's a big end plastic, it has a yield stress. So there are two main ways to transfer it into a petri dish. You can either scoop it out with a spatula and then uh, tap it in. And then the other way is I'll take it and I can begin to tap it to kind of dislodge it. And then I can take it and then just tap it into the dish. And then I'll do that, which just gets it to settle. And that's it. I'm gonna add a little bit of vacuum grease, which is from Dow Corning, you can look that up online. I like to put three little dollops on here. And all of this does, it just, just ensures that nothing is going to be moving around on the print bed during the process. So I then just place that on the print bed. All that I have to do now is just manually uh, center the uh, needle. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn the motors off obviously on the bed, and then I'm going to drop the uh, Z-axis until I get roughly to the top of the print container. So once I'm here, I'm gonna move the dish to the front so I can see where the needle tip is and I'm gonna switch over to fine motion control. And I'm just gonna very slowly continue to lower the needle until it's maybe, maybe a millimeter off the bottom of the dish. So right about there. And then all I have to do is just push the container roughly to the center of the dish. And then this is where you just press print. Something that you do not want your printer to do is any type of homing procedure after I've centered this. So everything is already set up ahead of time so that when I press print, the printer just starts from where it is. Uh, otherwise, if it thinks that it has to say home and, and touch each of the contact points, it's gonna move out of the bed. Uh, it's gonna drag the needle and, and clip the container that you're printing in. So just make sure that all the homing procedures have been disabled, which should already be default with the, uh, the fresh settings profile. So as long as you do that and your container is slightly bigger than what you're trying to print, you should be good to go. So once the print is done, I just take the Petri dish with the life support off. Obviously, since it's life support, it's not gonna flow anywhere. Um, it may be a little hard to see, uh, on the camera, but I can definitely see that there's uh, the artery model is in there. So I'm gonna take this, uh, and then we're just gonna throw it in the oven to melt out the life support and retrieve the collagen. Okay, so now that the print's done, all I have to do is put the life support and my print inside of a 37C oven. If you're doing this with cells, it's obviously just going to be a cell incubator, but in this lab space, we don't have to worry about anything being sterile, so I can just put it in a regular 37C oven. I do recommend for an ink like collagen, however, that you release it between 37 and 45 degrees Celsius. If you kind of get impatient and try and rush it by putting it in something like a 65C oven, that can actually melt the, the network a little too quickly and it kind of prevents the collagen from forming a more mature fibrillar network. So I do recommend a full half hour slow release process to ensure uh, that the, the collagen has time to gel. So it's been half an hour. We've let the 
gelatin based life support bath melt. So we're just going to take that out of the oven very carefully. And it might be a little hard to see on the camera with the contrast, but there is the little artery vein model. 